Hi there, my name is Gregory Adam Scott and this is my game Armored Commander, the World War II Tank Commander Roguelike. This video is a quick start um, video to try to uh, get new players into the game and to tell you how to get started commanding your own tank. So from the first uh, title screen we're going to hit end to start a new campaign. We get a little text telling us the background of the campaign. You can just hit enter to continue. And the first menu that we have is the campaign settings. So here you have two options. You can either say that um, your selection of tank model is either strict, which means that you begin with the most basic tank model and you have to wait to upgrade, or unlimited, which lets you pick any tank. If you're just starting off, definitely change this to unlimited and you can give yourself a, uh, a better tank um, with uh, better armor and more options uh, to help you survive the first couple days of the game. Um, also here, commander replacement can either be realistic, meaning if your commander is killed or sent home, your game is over, or casual, your commander, just like any other crew member, will be replaced if he is killed or sent home. Um, if you want to keep playing throughout the entire campaign, you can select casual. If you want to go traditional roguelike settings um, with uh, permadeath, then you can choose realistic. So for this game, I'm going to go with realistic and unlimited tank selection. So after you've uh, selected your settings, hit enter to continue. Here you can enter your name. You can either type in anything you want, or you can hit control R and randomly generate a name. That sounds good. And since I've selected um, unlimited tank selection, at this point I can actually choose my tank model. So it's everything from a basic M4 Sherman, uh, M4A1, M4A3, anything that would have been available in uh, July of 1944. And as the calendar goes on, um, uh, later versions uh, of the tank are going to become available too. So when I start off, I'm going to pick an Easy 8 because it has quite good armor. Uh, it's got a powerful gun. Uh, the 76 millimeter can't use smoke. Uh, it uses a different type of ammo, um, but that's okay. And it has um, these additional uh, additional attachments to the tank, which make things much easier. So I'm going to pick an Easy 8. Uh, again, here, select a name. You can enter anything you want. I usually go with Caribou, or you can hit Control R and randomly uh, generate a name from a list of names. So um, The next screen that you're going to see is the um, calendar interface. This will show you the current date, um, a description of where you are, or what you're doing, um, some historical background, and each day in the calendar has a chance of action. First day of the calendar, um, you always see action. The chance is 12, and it rolls two six-sided dice, adds them together. If the result is equal to or less than the chance, you see action. But the game is rigged against you. On the first day, you always see action. Later days are going to have much lower base action chances, and it's always going to be random as to which days in the calendar you actually see action. But first day, we are up. Um, from this screen, you can uh, begin your day, take a look at your tank. You also now have access to um, some of the options at the top. There is a help interface accessed through F1 which has some of the keywords and descriptions of some of the more, uh, some of the more important terms in the game. Um, if you hit F2, you can see basic tank info. This is the same information that we saw when we were selecting our tank. F3 brings us to crew info, so we can see um, Sergeant Joshua, which is me, the commander, um, hometowns for all of our crew. You can see um, for each crew member, you can see their level, current experience points. So now, um, so Joshua has 80 experience points and he'll reach his next level at 135. And he currently has three skill points. Um, we also have a corporal as our gunner, private first class loader, driver, and assistant driver. So basically the idea of the game is that the commander is you, but your other crew have important jobs to do and uh, leveling them up and giving them skills is important as well. Um, also here, you can set um, nicknames for any of your crew, and these nicknames can be changed at any time. So the first game you play, and when you start playing a new campaign, you're definitely going to want to hit F3, go into the crew info, and start assigning skills, because you start off with skill points, and skills are very helpful. So um, select your crew, either with the A and D keys or left and right keys, hit enter. You can see a list of skills, a description of what the skill does. Each skill has a number of activation levels. These skills are all activated automatically. You don't have to worry about using them in the game. Um, the game will roll for you, and if it rolls under the activation level percentage, the skill gets activated. When you first start, um, something like fire direction for your commander is, ex is uh, extremely helpful. If you haven't chosen casual commander replacement and you actually want to keep him alive, something like uh, pocket Bi one level of pocket Bible is also very useful. And then um, eagle-eyed as well, because usually the commander is going to have their hatch open, so this actually comes in quite handy. 
So next let's go over to the gunner. Um, again, quick trigger is a very handy skill and I'm also going to pick eagle-eyed for him as well. No, maybe not for the gunner because I don't think he actually has a hatch. So instead let's pick uh, target tracking. So that'll help us hit moving targets. For the loader, I'm going to give him one level of uh, shell juggler because that's really uh, handy. For the driver, I for cover. And you can spend time looking through the description of all these, all these skills, try to pick the ones that are most uh, helpful, and as you get a feel for the game, you'll get a better sense about um, what kind of uh, skills that you want to give your crew, what kind of a crew you want to build up. And then here, that's probably the most useful skill to start. So we've spent all our skill points, our crew is ready. Um, we have some settings to look at, so if you press F10 you can get in the settings menu. One thing I added recently was that uh, this setting right here, wait for entry before clearing on screen labels. There's a lot of information that pops up on the screen and if you're not used to the game it can go by really quickly and um, when I was watching two new players play the game um, I found that they were a little uh, a little confused with the amount of information and the speed that it was coming up so I added this in this option. So instead of stuff appearing on the screen then disappearing you actually have to hit, hit enter to dismiss it. Um, once you get used to the game you can definitely disable this to make things go a little faster. Also depending on what you want to do you can uh, have sounds on or off and in-game animations on or off, but we'll keep them all on for now. And up here, this will remind you what your campaign settings are, but obviously you can't change them once you've already started a campaign. So we're ready to go. Let's begin the combat day. So the reminder, this is at sunrise, 5 a.m., July 27th, 1944. It's an advanced mission. Expected resistance is light, and the weather is overcast, which means that we can't bring in um, air support, and the ground is dry. So let's head enter. First thing we see is the main gun ammunition menu. Um, we have high explosive, armor penetrating, and high velocity armor penetrating. This is for the 76 millimeter gun. If you choose a different tank, you'll have two different options, which is WP, uh, which stands for white phosphorus, and HCBI, which is the other type of smoke that I can't remember what it stands for right now. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start loading up ammo, which you do with uh, these keys, U, I, and O, and then if you have another uh, column here, there'll be an additional set of keys. If you hold down Alt, the arrows will reverse, telling you that you're moving shells out of your tank, but normally you're moving them into it. So let's move 8P. Now, uh, high velocity and uh, armor penetrating and HCBI are both limited uh, supply ammo, which means that each day we only get a random amount. Today we only have two. We definitely want to take both of those. And we won't put them in the ready rack right now. Instead, what we'll do is we'll load it up with about Oops. Say 3AP, 3HE, two, two, two. and even though it says max 65 here, you can go up to, I think, uh, 25 or 30 shells above that. But holding max um, more ammunition than your maximum can be dangerous if your tank gets knocked out. But I know that I'm going to be using a lot of HE shells, so I'll start loading them up. So once you've got your shell load ready, hit enter so we can continue. Um, we have one last chance to look at our tank. For, uh, from this screen, if you want to, you can toggle the hatch status of any of the crew. You can also change what your gun starts off loading, what you're going to use to reload, and whether or not you're going to use the ready rack. Ready rack makes it easier to fire more shots um, in quick su uh, succession in the same turn. But everything right now is pretty good to go. So hit escape. Every time you start a new type of mission, um, this text will pop up just telling you what advance is like. So advance means you're just moving through the map, trying to capture territory, and destroying any um, enemy units that you run across along the way. So press enter to continue. At the beginning of the day, you spend a random, random amount of time and random number of HE rounds actually getting to the start of the map area. And this, is not, this isn't in your, in your control, but the number of hours that you spend uh, determines how much daylight you have left to play during the day. So we'll hit, hit enter again, continue. Here's our campaign map. You can see it's made up of different areas. There's towns, woods, um, open fields. The exit area is basically our goal for the day. Uh, the little white spot tells us the center of each of these zones. We can see little farm buildings in some of them. And if we scroll down, we can see this is where we are. And the USA marker tells us that this zone has already been captured by us. First thing we do at the beginning of the day is we get a chance to, um, to scan uh, an adjacent area that will tell us what kind of enemy resistance we can expect. 
For the most part, you're going to be wanting to travel along roads, especially the gray improved roads because it uses less time. So I'm trying to plot a course moving up these roads toward the exit area. And given that um, there's no direct road, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it today, but I'll do my best. Best to avoid woods areas if you can, because if you do get into combat in them, um, it's much more deadly. Enemies will pop up uh, right next to you in some, in some cases and will more often have uh, concealing terrain. So with tab key, we can move our little selection around. So I want to find out what kind of resistance we can expect here. And I'll hit enter. Light resistance, sounds good to me. And so this is where you begin moving around the map. Basically, you can check any adjacent area, which will use 15 minutes of time. You can enter an adjacent area. The time used depends on what kind of a link it has. So if I remove from where I am now to here, it would take 45 minutes because there's no road. But to move to this area, it only takes 15 because there's already an improved road. Uh, the weather at the moment, the ground is dry. If the ground were muddy, all of these time, uh, time required for moving would be increased because it slows you down. You can also call in for an artillery or airstrike on an adjacent area. Because the weather's overcast, I can't use airstrikes, but I still have the option of artillery. If you're running low on ammo, you can call in for resupply, which takes 60 minutes and is not guaranteed to come. And then finally, uh, if you just want to see how your tank is doing, uh, which takes no time, you can hit V and we can see the same uh, tank console. So I'm going to start moving around. I'm not going to call in artillery because it's only light resistance. I'm going to move into the adjacent area. Enter. When you move in, in, into an adjacent area, you have the option of using advancing fire. Uses one to six HE rounds. Uh, it reminds you about how many you currently have. Um, if you use this and run into resistance, uh, you get a free attack at the beginning. So it's quite useful if you have the rounds to spare. So I'm going to hit Y and say yes. Use six rounds, no resistance. Sometimes your crew as well will, pi will pipe up with their own um, sort of barks or, or chats, their uh, comments on what's going on during the day. There's not a whole lot there, but I plan to uh, expand it in the future. So victory points, which is basically a measure of how well you do in the entire campaign or awarded for capturing areas. So far, so good. Let's keep going. Check this area. Uh, medium resistance, so I'm going to call in an artillery strike on it with A, and then A again. Success! So if I do run into combat here, I'll get a free attack against any defending enemy forces. And here we go, so we have a battle encounter. This is the battle encounter screen. Um, this guy right here is your tank. The little uh, white stick shows you which way your main turret is, is facing. This console here is exactly the same as the one you saw before, except now it shows you what order all of your crew is on. Down here you'll see different messages. This is where your, um, the commands that are available are displayed. Down here you can get information about enemy units uh, on the map. Again, here's the weather, uh, weather display. And then around the outside here, um, the map is divided up into uh, six areas. So here's the front, front right, front left, the rear, rear right, and rear left, and each one of these is under control of either you or enemy forces. So USA means you control this section, uh, GER means the Germans control this section. So at the beginning of a combat, there's going to be different enemy units that spawn on the board. When they first appear, you only know sort of basically what general type they are. You don't know what type of a tank this is, and until you actually spot it, until one of your crew spots it, you can't directly uh, attack it either. So unknown tank uh, reported at medium range, so that's this kind of medium green um, uh, circle around here. There it is. MG team, so this is an infantry team with a machine gun reported at long range. And an anti-tank gun, which is a specialist gun for taking out tanks, hence the name anti-tank, reported at long range. So because I called an artillery strike before I entered the area, I get a free attack, so that's worked out now. And it looks like the only result so far is that the MG team was hit by smoke. Smoke makes it harder to hit things if the line of sight passes through the hex with the smoke in it. Smoke again, and that's it. Now I get my advancing fire attack. No results from that. Um, at the beginning of uh, a, a battle encounter, either it starts either with the enemy ambushing you or you getting the drop on the enemy. In this case, the enemy has the first attack. So you have no uh, option what to do. 
um, they get a free attack at the beginning. Luckily, our tank has started haul down, which means it gets a little bit more protection from incoming attacks. So let's see what happens. Um, the tank, which we don't know what kind of a tank it was yet, wasn't facing us at the beginning, so it has to spend its first turn uh, turning to face us. The MG team is firing at our tank with small arms fire. That wouldn't normally be a danger, except most of our crew have open hatches, so they might get wounded. And one of them is hit. Um, the loader has been hit because he had an open hatch, and now he has a light wound. And the anti-tank gun fires at friendly tanks, so there's assumed to be allied friendly forces near us, but not actually our tank. Um, if we lose friendly tanks or infantry squads, we lose victory points. But luckily, um, if the anti-tank gun is firing at a friendly tank, he's not firing at us. And no effect, so that was lucky. Um, now, in the next uh, stage, there is a chance to spot um, enemy units. In this, case, in this case, this tank is now hidden, which means that it can't attack us and we can't attack it. There's assumed to be some kind of a train feature in between uh, the two of us. Um, MG team has been spotted. Anti-tank gun has been spotted, but not identified yet. So, the tank is hidden, which means that until it moves or we move, um, there's not going to be any kind of attacks going between us. Um, Anti-tank gun is spotted, but unidentified. It could be something really scary or, or something not that uh, not too scary, although it's in our side arc, so that um, pretty much anything uh, could be damaging from there. And finally, the MG team, which is at long range, in woods and in smoke as well. So it's going to be very difficult to do anything with them. So the, in the orders phase, this is where you choose your orders. You issue orders to your crew. You decide what to do um, in the game. So right now, I'm hull down, which means I probably don't want to move. So I'm going to close the hatch of my driver and assistant driver. Uh, I'm also going to close the hatch of the loader. And I think what I want to do is I want to fire an HE shell um, at the anti-tank gun, because even though it's at long range, uh, it's in the open. So it's worth a shot anyway. I'm going to tell my gun, my uh, commander to direct main gunfire. That means I have a better chance of hitting, and the gunner is going to fire the main gun. I've got HE loaded, which is exactly what I want to use against an anti-tank gun. Because, I mean, there's it's not armored. There's people around it. HE is going to be much more effective. I'll also tell my assistant driver to pass up ammo just in case I run out of shells in the ready rack. So everybody is good to go. Fire main gun phase. Um, because my turret is facing forward and the enemy unit is in uh, this area over here, I need to turn it, which I do with the arrow key. And once I turn it, I can use the tab key to select different targets. And I think in this case, the uh, anti-tank gun is much more of a threat. So I'm going to fire at that. I've selected my target, um, everything's set up, I hit enter to fire. So this tells us what kind of dice roll modifiers are affecting my chance to hit. Long range, you don't have a very good chance to hit. It's three or less on 2d6, which means you roll two six-sided dice and add them together, giving you a number between two and 12. Obviously, from the beginning, I didn't have a very good chance. Um, I, um, there was a, a bad modifier because I rotated my turret. It's an emplaced gun target, so it's harder to hit. There are also smoke factors in the way, which makes it even harder to hit. And my commander was directing fire, which at least gives me a minus two, which is, which is good in this case. Negative modifiers make it easier to hit. In the end, I ended up with a re uh, required score to hit of zero or less, which means basically I don't have a chance to hit it until I can change some of these modifiers. Um, but luckily, I maintain rate of fire, so I do get another shot. Now let's see. No, it has to be the same shot. So I think in this case, um, I might just barely have a chance to hit because the modifiers will be different. Let's see. Yeah, so I got a target acquired, and um, I didn't have the penalty for, for rotating my turret. So I could have made it on a two, uh, but I missed. Maintain rate of fire, let's try again. Now it's gonna be three or less because I have target acquired two. Missed, and I didn't maintain rate of fire, so that's over. So now the enemy units again get a chance to act. Hidden tank is gonna come closer, which means it's no longer hidden. Uh, MG team's firing at friendly infantry. Luckily no effect. Anti-tank gun doesn't do anything. In the friendly action phase, your allied units, which are nearby and around you, get a chance to do attacks. Um, these can be very helpful, and uh, oftentimes units will get will get taken out, not by you, not, not by your tank specifically, but by other allied units. Ah, and it's a Panzer V. 
If you want to find out more about any of the units that you've already identified, you can right click on them. Um, basically, we're, uh, we're facing a Panther, which is a heavy tank, and currently it's in front facing. So even with the uh, 76 millimeter gun, we don't have much of a chance against it. So I think in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw smoke. Rather than fire. And to throw a smoke grenade, you have to have an open hatch. That's fine. Uh, gunner's not going to do anything, so let's do that. And we'll hope our allied units can do something against these guys. Doesn't seem to do anything. Self-propelled gun has appeared. Uh, one of the random events that can happen is enemy reinforcements pop up. Um, something you see sometimes is set spot uh, sectors. Depending on how, what your hatch status is like for certain uh, crew members, they can only spot in one sector. So here is where you actually choose uh, where they spot. So I'll see if I can spot the panther again. Yes. So this is how the game is played. It goes on this uh, in rounds. Um, basically, Armored Commander is a game of survival. You're not this kind of, even at the end of the game, you're not this incredibly almost indestructible, overpowered death machine um, rolling through France and Germany. You are always vulnerable. Even the better armored later uh, models of Sherman uh, from the side are, are vulnerable to, to some of the smaller German tanks and anti-tank guns. In this case, it's not looking that great because I'm facing a self-propelled gun. Um, which is basically uh, like a tank, except it doesn't have a turnable turret, um, an anti-tank gun, and, uh, and, a, a, and a panther. In this case, what I would probably do is play very defensively, especially because this anti-tank gun is at, is at long range. I do have the option of trying to back up and try to force these guys off the board, but that will lose me a lot of victory points. So I think um, what my strategy for the next couple turns would be would be basically be to lay down smoke and try to hope that my allied forces are better at uh, taking out these units. Because again, the point is survival. The point is not necessarily to try to destroy as many as you can. Um, ah, so in this case, the Panther is in the side facing and its side armor is so much lower, I might actually, um, yeah, let's give it a try. Let's see what we can do here. Commander's gonna direct main gun fire. Gunner's gonna fire main gun. Unfortunately, I have uh, HE loaded. But luckily, my loader can change the gun load uh, to something better. For example, AP or HVAP, which, which will actually have a, an effect on this armored unit. Um, the downside of changing the gun load is that I don't have a chance to maintain rate of fire because it takes time for him to take the HE shell out, put a new one in, and then fire as well. But at least I'll get one shot to try to take out this Panther. Because if it's exposed its side armor to me, uh, it's too good of an opportunity not to take. So let's do that. Um, system driver doesn't have to pass ammo because I can't maintain rate of fire. Everything is set up. We'll use an HVAP round just to be sure that if we do hit, we have the best chance possible of taking it out. Direct fire mode. Let's see how we do. Nine or less, pretty good odds. Yes. We hit, and because it was with HVAP on the side armor, I don't think it has much of a chance. Yes, target is automatically destroyed. So we took out a panther. Not too bad, and we're still alive. For now. Okay, good. And the gun moves. Anti-tank gun is destroyed, and we spotted the uh, self-propelled gun. So in the next couple, to, couple, in the next couple of rounds, this would be our next priority to try to take this out. Um, very light armor shouldn't be as hard. The only bad thing is that it's at long range. So this is how the game is played. Um, when you're finished uh, for the moment and you want to continue later, just open up the menu where you can see uh, a description of the victory points that you've gained uh, in this encounter. It's still undetermined because nobody's won the battle yet. And you just hit Q to save the game and quit. You go out to the main menu and from which you can continue your campaign and it tells you the current date, the tank name, the commander's name, and the name of the um, of the campaign that you're currently playing. So that's how the game is played. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post um, on the Reddit thread or on the, the comments of this YouTube channel, and I hope you enjoy it.